Welcome to Nature's Newsroom here at the heart of COP26. I'm Maitre Seath Raman, and today we're going to be talking to a stellar panel of women who are making a massive difference in all the industries that impact our very lives, from infrastructure to, of course, the furniture that we sit on. Joining me is Magalie Anderson. She is a Chief Sustainability Officer at Wholesome, which, of course, is the Swiss conglomerate that touches our lives in terms of the buildings we uh, live and work in to the bridges that we drive on. Erin Billman joins us. She is Executive Director at Science Based Targets Network, teaching companies and helping companies to actually achieve all that they want to for the planet. And also, of course, Lena Kovac, if I pronounce that right, uh, who is Chief Sustainability Officer at IKEA, which needs absolutely no introduction as the world's biggest uh, furniture uh, seller. So let's start this conversation off, ladies. You've all done quite a bit of work in convincing your companies, your stakeholders, your customers of all that they need to do. Magali, I'm going to start with you. You're in one of the toughest sectors to bring to net zero. How as, uh, how as wholesome targets all they want to do in sustainability are you managing? It's one of the toughest sectors uh, to bring down in terms of your emissions. What are you doing? So what you call a tough sector, I call it a world of opportunities. This is where we can change things. This is where we can have an impact. And that's why I love it. So I will I talk two seconds about what we did in the climate. We started um, one year ago by joining the business ambition for 1.5 degrees, which is the so-called net zero pledge. But we did it making sure that we had our 2030 target validated by science-based target initiative, SBTI. And for me, it was super important because it was important to show that we were just not making long-term promises. We had the pathway, we know what we do, and we were committed, and we were committed to start today. Um, since last week, we actually announced that uh, we, have, we were one of the first seven companies in the world to get the full net zero validated by SBTI as well. So. In climate, the good thing about it is that there is a known framework, known methodology such as SBTI, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which makes actually everyone's life relatively easy between bracket. But now, when it comes to nature, it's a bit harder because most companies just don't know how to measure it. The frameworks are not that clear. So we announced part of the IUCN Congress last month our new nature strategy where we were committing not only on replenishing water on the water side, but also on the biodiversity, having a calling net positive with having a measurable way of doing it. And this is where, for me, being part of the corporate engagement companies with SBT, N this time is so important. It's a straight continuation from what we do with SBTI, but for me, it's absolutely the way we have to go. We have to show that not only we measure it, but we are transparent on our pathway and where we are going. That's something I hear a lot from different companies, that they need a clear direction and, and some ability to measure. So where do you step into this to help them do that? How can these companies look at balancing what they want to do with what they actually can achieve at the end of the day? Mm. That's exactly why Science Based Targets Network was formed. Uh, we basically saw that companies were asking for the guidance for setting science based targets for nature, recognizing that if you address climate in silo, uh, you have unintended consequences, um, risks of significant trade offs, um, and that you might be costing us nature one of the greatest allies we have in climate um, change fight, which is nature. And so uh, we aim to define the bar for companies of what does it mean to do enough to do your part to stop the loss of nature and contribute to a nature positive future. And when we say nature, that's all the drivers of nature. So climate change is included, but also land use, fresh water, ocean, and biodiversity broadly. That brings me to you, Lena, because you're involved with all of that, um, and IKEA's had a pretty successful run at trying to ensure its footprint is a delicate one in the world, but you still have challenges. So run us through the journey of how you've approached the problem from, uh, from the IKEA perspective and what you think of these balancing acts that you have to do. Mm. I, first of all, I would say that I recognize a lot of what is already talked about here today. Uh, and when you think about the whole climate agenda, the reason for the climate agenda is to protect people and nature. 
So to not be able to measure nature is, of course, a dilemma. But I can also go back a little bit. Why we have really had a journey is measuring climate. The whole science-based target for climate has given us insights and knowledge and ability to actually move in a way that we would have never done without it. Uh, the insights of understanding what our material impact is, for example. We do talk about furniture, but we also have uh, food in our range. So we, uh, we see the agriculture impact, we see the forest management, we have 60% of all our products are made from wood. So we definitely go directly into, so how do we measure biodiversity? That's why I'm very super happy to be here today and announce that we will also support the science-based target for nature and we will be part of the corporate collaboration and engagement around this because it's very needed, as you were also mentioning, that if we want to see if we do some positive impact, we also need to measure. That's actually the sole reason for us to be at COP26. To do commitments and ambitions we feel strongly about is of course important, but if we can't measure and we can't follow up and we don't know what definitions are, we don't even know if we're on track. So very happy to be here today. Fantastic. And that brings me back to you, Lena. Run us through for, for the audience who wants to understand what those measurements could and possibly look like, what you're aiming for. What would they be? How would you actually measure for nature? Yeah. Uh, well, first, the science-based target Target by definition is a smart goal so it has to be measurable actionable time bound um, a few examples would be um, avoiding any additional conversion of land in terms of number of hectares um, reducing freshwater quantity um, improving freshwater quality and again those have specific numbers tied to them both in terms of quantity or quality and by a certain time frame and so that would will be that is the commitment that a company will set that we will validate is qualifies as a science-based target for nature would this be workable for uh, stakeholders at wholesome for example when it comes to these targets? Would it work if it's not legally binding and this is voluntary? Yeah, it will. It will because it's not necessarily a cost problem, which is sometimes what could refrain people from doing something. If, if you take our case, there's two ways we have an impact on nature. There's the way where we have quarries and we need to rehabilitate them. Now, the commitment we did was that if we look at our, bio, if we measure our biodiversity indexed and by 2030, that will have improved. How we are going to do it is by rehabilitating better, doing transformational rehabilitation, meaning instead of, of planting single trees type of thing, we would partner with local organization to find what are the native insects, native plants, etc., etc. So just doing it better, it's not necessarily a cost problem. But then where I see us having a bigger role is looking at nature in the city. We, the, the mega trend has such that we are going to build so much in the coming years, so many cities, that, you know, looking at what Erin just said, we really need to make sure we do it in such a way that we are reconciling nature and cities, that the nature would be happy about what we are doing. And that's, for me, even greater than only the wholesome case of the measurement of our biodiversity impact. Well, that that's an interesting point, isn't it? It's about cities, and if they're looking at cities, that brings up energy use. This is a struggle that you still are dealing with. Run me through the big challenges here when it comes to energy. It is Energy Day here at COP26. That is one of the biggest challenges. If you're looking at a number of places, you're, you talked about your use of wood. Uh, we're talking about coal, uh, uh, the, the pledges being made today. Run me through the challenge of the energy usage and balancing it with nature. How do you measure that? Mm. Yeah, what we can see, of course, is that we have an ambition to only use renewable and recycled materials. Uh, we have an ambition to go over to renewable energy. And when you do that, you, of course, go into a lot of the renewable materials. Uh, as you say, there could be a dilemma here in the m land use that you have. So really understanding the land use imprint is extremely important. Uh, and what we can see here is that it's hard to do 
that without having a measurement around nature. Um, because you need to have a landscape approach. You talk about the city, but it's a whole landscape approach of understanding how can you have conservation on the ground, how can you have production, how can people with, that live there and, and be uh, still supported by the water systems and have the food system. So as a company today, you have to have that holistic approach. Uh, but in order to actually be focused on movements, you also have to wait to measure it and come together. And I would even say that the voluntary part or the legal part is not the most important. It is actually, we're looking for the possibility to measure and benchmark. How can you benchmark and not learn from each other if you don't know what you're actually talking and focusing on? Uh, and we have the discussion already, you know, how many, how many uh, species should there be in a, in a certain place and, and what are the local impact? There's so many questions that would be fantastic to have the dialogue around in order to actually make real impact. How would you do it? You're a hard to obey sector, you, you're dealing with, uh, uh, with coal and energy usage and gas. How are you looking to balance it out to ensure that you can balance the nature element that you want to address? Well, a bit like I said earlier, there's always two aspects, right? There's the aspect of our own energy usage. And if you look at our own energy usage, we use it in what we call the scope one emissions, which is um, when we heat up our kiln. And we already have plants that are doing 100% replacement of fossil fuels by um, waste, biomass, etc. So that we, we have a very clear roadmap, we know how to do it. It's more a problem of putting our hand on the waste. The waste stream in certain countries don't necessarily exist. Sometimes it's cheaper to landfill than to bring it to our plant, for example. So that's one. Then you have what we call the scope two, our own energy, which is part of the SBTI commitment I was talking about, 65% reduction by uh, 2030 and then zero by 2050. And this is typical renewable you know, um, solar panels, farms in our plants, etc. That's we have again a clear roadmap. But I would like to bring a third one: is the energy used by the cities, and this is where, when you look at the total life cycle of a building, you look at the, the CO2 used to build it, but you have to use that the CO2 for the usage, for the heating, the cooling, the total life. Not only concrete is an excellent material for that because of uh, it thermal uh, inertia, but also we now have fantastic products which we can deploy right now to, to beat the urban heat island effect. So we can do urban forest, we can do vertical forest like, mm -hmm. like this one, but on buildings. We can do um, green roofs yep. and all of that will reduce the temperature by several degrees inside the cities, but also inside the apartments. Absolutely. And, and that's a great impact on the energy as well. I think that's really fascinating to hear two perspectives of, from both these companies that have done so much to shape our world and our lives. But ladies, thank you so much. And Aaron, thank you for bringing them together and actually getting these stakeholders to think about nature as part of their core sustainability strategy. So thank you all and thank you for joining us.